right. Welcome everybody to the uh, first ever Conway Transfer Station Trashapalooza. Uh, so this is this is where we get to talk about ideas for the future, and you get to ask questions about what it might look like. Um, so, without further ado, um, we have here as a special guest uh, Jan Amin. Um, you're, you're, you have a lot of titles, but uh, the one that I'm going to botch at my uh, is just you, Franklin County Solid Waste Management Yes, I'm director. the executive director of the Franklin County Solid Waste District, of which Conway is a member town. Great, and then we do we do have a PowerPoint that has been put together by um, Select Board member Chris Waldo, who is going to do a lot of the talking, so I'm told. So, um, but that is correct. Uh, so go ahead. Yeah, I first wanted to just acknowledge everyone that had a part in this um, and thank those involved in gather, <coughs> gathering these details um, that we're going to be presenting to you today, as well as offering ideas on how to uh, tackle these issues. Uh, first and foremost is are the people that work at the transfer station. Um, we have Troy and Fred, uh, Jim and Tim all here today. Uh, they do a wonderful job. Um, they go above and beyond. Every time I'm up there, they're doing something beyond their what their job duty describes. So I just want to put that out there as well, that i um, really thankful to those guys and to uh, speaking with me and others on um, the issues they face up there and how uh, they think they can be resolved. Also, I want to thank uh, Phil and Erica, Veronique, Jan, Adam, uh, all helped out uh, get this together so thanks to thanks to all and uh, the Charlemont transfer station we actually had a visit there um, Thorne he is the one who runs that transfer station he was very helpful uh, Sarah Reynolds was the town manager and the select board member was um, Val Valentine Marguerite no, Marguerite was the one who offered it oh, I think yeah. Valentine was Val the one who was there yeah Valentine was the one who was there so uh, uh, thanks to, to everybody involved. Thank you. Um, I, I created this PowerPoint to help out, uh, to, to help out uh, not only offer you the pertinent information about our transfer station, but to also make sure I don't take up too much of your time or go off topic. Um, if you would please reserve any comments or questions until the end of the presentation, I'm sure everybody would appreciate that. Um, First things first, inflation is a real problem all of us are facing um, that, in, that everybody's impacted by. Uh, towns like ours aren't immune to that issue. Um, the volatility of fuel cost alone can decimate a town's budget. Um, this may seem like a low priority subject, the transfer station, but our goal is to be fiscally responsible and to do everything in our power not to raise taxes while maintaining our ser services. As you're going to see, our town is an outlier when it comes to how we manage the transfer station. Um, the hope is that by providing this information, uh, you will recognize why we are taking the time to address this topic and offer your feedback and your ideas on how to rein in costs to get, to close, to get us closer to a uh, revenue neutral system. Uh, I believe these proposals that we're going to discuss today uh, will help drive a more responsible approach to waste consumption, recycling and compost efforts, and discourage bad and, frankly, unfair practices. Oh, oh my gosh. What? Uh, my bad. It's I'm so sorry. Uh, because somebody was just telling me that the mic is not on for us. I apologize because at least FCAT is recording it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm so sorry about that. That's why we're recording it. That's right. <laughs> All right. Definitely not giving that speech again. <laughs> no, so, you already have. It's fine. It's recorded. <laughs> we'll, we'll, just, <laughs> we'll just dive into the, the PowerPoint presentation. Again, I'm just going to read what you see in front of you. Um, everybody, there's pamphlets up there if you need them. So let's go to the next slide, please. Okay, there are 17 operated transfer stations in Franklin County. Um, these transfer stations are, uh, you know, have a relatively um, simple setup. 
um, but there's different ranges of each transfer station. Um, some facilities only out offer trash and recycling, um, while our facility is more like a full, as you'll see here, a full service model where it offers trash recycling, scrap, uh, bulky waste, um, you know, single items such as electronics and uh, mattresses and sofas and whatnot. Um, trash is shipped to a commercial transfer station in Springfield. Uh, then it is put on rail and sent to South Carolina. That information will help you understand cost as well. Recyclables are shipped to the Springfield Materials Recycling Facility. This is the trash cost forecast. As you'll see in 2022, it was 86.75 per ton. That's when we were, uh, had a relationship with the community Eco Power. That, uh, I'm sorry, that's the new one. No. Oh, that's, I'm sorry, that is the old one. So the CEP filed for bankruptcy. Um, since they went bankrupt, we, ha we have our services through Republic Services. Uh, that increased our cost to $99 a ton. That added $5,000 to our disposal budget alone. In 2024, the projection is going to be 102 a ton, and in 2025, it'll be 106. As you can see there, it's over 22% higher than in 2022. This is the trash generation comparison um, between Conway and surrounding towns. Um, obviously, Deerfield is a is a uh, uh, a town, a good basis uh, of comparison here. Um, as you'll see, broken down by permits and total tons, you can see how many pounds per user on a yearly average we have. Uh, I personally don't believe that Conway residents throw away that much more trash than our surrounding neighbors. Here is a map that outlines the uh, pounds per household per year. As you will see, it is based, um, there you have a, uh, a color graphic based on the amount of trash. And on the next slide, we'll zoom in to Conway. As you can see, Conway is again the outlier. Our surrounding towns dispose of less trash per user. Again, I don't believe this is factual. The da data is factual. I don't believe that our residents are throwing away more trash than our neighbors. Uh, I put this together to show the comparisons between our town and other towns in Franklin County. Um, I won't go over too many of the details here because you have them in front of you, but I put on here the operating hours so you can see uh, how long the transfer stations are open. The resident real estate tax rate, that rate is based on the dollar figure per thousand dollar value of your assessed property. Then you'll see permit fees, disposal fees, or disposal types, the cost per trash bag in some towns that sell trash bags, uh, or stickers, and the bulky waste pricing. On this next slide, it's just again a comparison. I put Conway at the top again so you can see the difference between um, our rates and the surrounding towns around us. Pay as you throw. Most towns in our, in our county and surrounding counties have a pay as you throw system. Conway is the only town in Franklin County not to have such a system. Um, some examples of past towns that have adapted this system, Roe is one of them, as you'll see, switched to a modified pay-as-you-throw system uh, in mid-2019. Uh, the way Roe does it is they distribute trash stickers, 52 trash stickers per household for free. Each additional sticker is $1.50. In the first year, they reduced their trash tonnage by 31 tons, or about 25% year to year. A quarter is a lot. Irving switched to a modified pay as you throw system as well in late 2021. Each household receives 104 tr free trash stickers. Um, they can request an additional 52 
Additional stickers cost 50 cents each, and in their first year, they reduced their tonnage by over 160, or about 34% year to year. Uh, another benefit uh, of a modified pay-as-you-throw system is Conway would be eligible for an additional $1,750 in DEP grant funds each year. Uh, here is a map showing the pay-as-you-throw communities. As you see, Conway's pointed out there in white because we do not have one. Now look at all the surrounding towns that do. Okay, here's some of the concerning uh, conditions we laid out. Um, as the only town in the county without a pay-as-you-throw system, Conway is most certainly receiving trash from non-residents. Uh, this is primarily through Conway residents who offer free trash disposal to family and friends. Um, the modified pay-as-you-throw pro program would discourage this activity and hold each household accountable. Uh, right now, every Conway resident is paying for a non-resident disposal fee. Again, this is the assumption. Um, seniors often make the least amount of trash are disproportionately paying more for this non-resident trash disposal. Um, in 2022, the town spent $100,000 in trash. Now that didn't include, I'm sorry. No, that does. Oh, it does, That okay. does, yeah. This amount, oh, no, it says here, sorry, does not include the compost. Right, but it, that was the recycling. You're off. Right, right, okay. So $100,000 uh, in trash. Now, you just saw how many permits we had. It was about 1,000. Each permit's $10. You can do the math there. We're only paying for 10% of our trash fees. Conway accepts bulky waste such as furniture, toilets, sinks, mattresses, uh, and other items. Uh, the town pays 109 per ton for disposal of the bulky items and 35 per mattress. 35 per mattress is across the board uh, in, in all the county. Ashfield and Deerfield are neighboring towns that collect bulky waste and charge per item. So there's an incentive for people in those towns that don't want to pay for that to have a friend in Conway dump it off. Okay, we'll move on to the next. Uh, this is a picture that Jen received from, uh, from our bulky waste on January 19th. As you will see, there's some mattresses, a box spring in there, but the vast majority of the items you see here are um, building supply, or, uh, contractor, yeah, construction, construction debris. debris. Okay, business waste. This is another topic that needs to come up and be discussed. Um, some towns uh, allow builders and other commercial entities to use the transfer station, um, but they offer higher permit fees for those um, for those uh, businesses. Uh, Orange allows business waste with a permit fee of $63 and $175 per ton. Uh, most transfer stations do not allow businesses to use their facility or the town has extra charges as we mentioned for commercial entities. Uh, this is because businesses typically generate a higher volume of waste than households, which is pretty obvious. In addition, they're earning revenue from their company which is producing the waste. As we saw in the last uh, one of the last slides, it was mainly construction uh, debris. Uh, if you're a contractor, or if you've had a contractor work on your house before, I'm sure you're getting charged for waste disposal. Bulky waste. Uh, year 2022, Conway spent over $20,000 on bulky waste hauling to disposal. This includes mattress cost of nearly 1,400. Again, this is the comparison between Conway and Deerfield. As you can see, we are well above the pounds per user than Deerfield. Uh, this is the bulky waste fees that Deerfield applies to their system. Um, we currently do not have this. Uh, it's basically free aside from mattresses. Uh, I won't get too, too far into this, um, but I just wanted to offer you this information as far as the budget, uh, what the budget entails, and how the costs are between uh, each line. This is what we can work on. Um, 
So this right here are the material management budgets, meaning what we're throwing away. So your trash haul, your bulky, recycling, and compost. Okay, so this is uh, what we're, the next slide is gonna show is just a proposal for a new program. By no means are we um, implementing this. This is just an example. Uh, here what I show is uh, the same price for the window decal, uh, which is $10, and um, stating that we would offer two uh, free bags a week, so 104, um, I'm sorry, not bags, stickers. 104 trash bag stickers at no additional cost over the decal. Um, the next area you see here are the number of stickers that would be required per bag size. This is based on typical bag size. You have your kitchen bags, typically around 16 gallons, or the bags that you have in your bins, which are typically up to 33. Um, uh, this might not be very popular. Again, this is just a uh, example uh, about loose trash and contractor bags not being accepted. Um, bulky waste would be determined per item cost. Uh, Veronique has already been working on that list. Uh, it'll be very similar to the surrounding towns. Uh, construction debris will not be accepted at the transfer station. Um, really, we're not set up for that. There's OSHA standards. Uh, Greenfield accepts construction debris, so anybody can go to Greenfield 15 minutes away. And then um, everything there that wouldn't be a charge with the access permit, which is the same today. Um, so the hope here, like I was saying at the beginning, is even if we're not taking in more money based on the permits, that we'll have a more responsible approach to it, where people were, will be disposing of less trash, um, will not be taking other people's trash to dispose, will be more concerned with recycling and compost efforts, because that alone, as we saw with Roe and um, Irving. Irving, was uh, a more 25 percent or more of a reduction. That's twenty-five thousand dollars on a hundred thousand dollar budget. So again, um, thanks everybody for going through this presentation with us. Thank you everybody from the transfer station. Uh, Jan, if you had anything to add. It's a great overview. Um, I'm happy to answer questions. I, I um, helped both Irving and Roe implement their modified, we call it a modified pay-as-you-go program because um, the town is basically supplying some number of free uh, trash bag stickers. Um, in other programs uh, around like, uh, Deerfield, every single bag, you have to, pay, you have to buy every single bag. Um, at a dollar fifty, or I think they're two fifty uh, trash bags. So the modified system kind of takes into account, um, you know, for towns that are shifting into this program, uh, it's a way to help um, ease the pain a little bit, maybe. Um, and what I what I know for both Irving and Rowe is that um, they were. They were definitely, the reduction in trash was not because residents were recycling more. We actually did, we saw very little increase in recycling. The reduction in trash is because everybody in the surrounding towns had pay as you throw, and so trash from Heath was coming to Rowe, and Charlemont was going to Rowe, and Irving had curbside, so everybody in the county was driving to Irving the night before trash day and dropping their trash on the curb. Um, and once they went to the system, they basically eliminated, eliminated non-resident uh, trash disposal. So um, it's a very generous thing for people to do to offer friends and family free disposal, but as you saw, it's costing you $100,000. It's not really free. So a program, whatever program the town uh, decides to implement, um, I think really comes back to kind of accountability for, for taxpayers. Um, so taxpayers are, are getting um, are paying just for their town's waste and recycling uh, and, and bulky waste. So I will, I can talk about trash all night. So I'll, I'll, I'll stop talking and let folks ask questions and one of us will be able to answer. So I have a question just following on that. Are you confident that all of the reduction was stoppage of leakage in from other towns? Or did, I mean, you know. I, I would say probably 90 percent was from out of town and then some people realize you know some small percentage of residents realized 
Um, in Irving, their trash, their recycling did go up. They were doing uh, maybe, um, they were doing like six tons a week, and now they're doing maybe seven and a half. So they saw, they saw a bump in their recycling because people had limited trash disposal. Mm -hmm. But I'm 99% I'm confident that about 90% of it was out from out of town. And it wasn't going into the river or into the woods. I mean, if, if you've got to pay for it, a lot of people are going to just dump it on the side of the road. Yeah, but that's the thing. They're they're get everybody in in Irving. They're getting two free bags a week. So people, most people, most people figured out how to make two bags of trash a week and recycle more. Or um, what what I've talked about in towns is um, everybody who has a permit gets 104 stickers. So if you're if you only make one bag a week, that gives you 52 extra stickers. You can give that to your neighbor, you can give that to your child, you can give that to whoever. So, so people, people who need extra stickers can find it from neighbors and friends. Um, some towns, like uh, my community, actually people can turn their extra stickers into the town hall and they'll They'll give them out to maybe a family. You know, this is this is hardest. I mean, I'm seeing people of middle age and older, but if you're if you have a family and you have kids in diapers, that's that's this is probably the hardest part. Is you may need three bags a week or four bags a week, but um, there are ways to get to get those stickers mm -hmm. moving through town. So I think what the gentleman's trying to say is, if we start charging people for couches and chairs. How many couches and chairs are we going to find out in the woods? Yeah, we didn't. We haven't seen that. I mean, that's that's you know a, what I mean? that's a that's a pretty big concern. Um, and I guess you know it would be great if the highway guy like how many mattresses right mattresses can no longer go to your transfer station. So I guess the question is how many mattresses have you found in the woods since November first? Um, maybe one or two. I don't. Know, I haven't heard of any. So, so illegal dumping. What I can tell you is, um, and I've been I've been at the solid waste district for 27 years. So this comes up all the time when we talk about pay as you throw. Ninety, some pro the majority of people are going to do the right thing, right? The majority of people are going to figure out they're going to pay their 10 bucks for their couch because this is the town that you live in. So yeah, maybe you want to go to Ashfield or maybe you want to go to another town and dump your couch there. But it, we haven't seen it across the county. Um, we didn't see more illegal dumping in Irving or Rowe because um, most, people, most people learn how to use the system and they learn how to, how to work together or they, they realize there's a cost for disposal. Um, so they're going to pay the 10 bucks for the couch or they'll pay the $5 for the toilet. Why has um, Northampton been on TV for illegal dumping? Why has Springfield been on TV for illegal dumping? I, I don't know. We haven't, you should talk to your highway guy and police department. We don't really, there, I'm not saying there's not illegal dumping, but it's not the majority of people. Um, there's a few people here I know that have been in town for a long time. Um, I grew up here and in the early 80s, it was a major, major problem. We have just, just talking the Cricket Hill, we're talking 4,000, 6,000 acres, Lee or whichever, with no more than that. Or, uh, there was a huge problem. I used to ride dirt bikes up there and four-wheeler and all this kind of stuff. There was cars in the trash that was up there. And I remember the town actually going up and pulling the trash out because people were throwing all kinds of trash up there. And if you don't think that's gonna happen, you're crazy. It's gonna be a big problem. And that's one of the reasons why they kind of opened up the town, I believe, the dump to accept some of this stuff so that it wasn't getting thrown off in the woods. There's no gates for our state forests. And it's so easy to go out there and do it. And there's still to this day, there's still pe people that dump, dump the stuff out there. And it's something to really consider. I'm glad Jack uh, kind of reminded me of that because it's yeah. a major problem. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying that people don't illegally dump. Um, they certainly do. What, I, what I'm saying is that in, in all of my time in the Solid Waste District, when new programs, when Irving implemented their program, when Roe did, when North, I've helped Northfield, Sunderland, Roe, Irving um, implement, go from, you know, 100% free trash to a modified system. They did not find suddenly an explosion of illegal dumping. So, I, you know, I can't say it's not going to happen, 
but it's not the system. It's not generally what results. Um, and I know it's I know it's a concern and it's a valid concern. Um, and I guess the question would be, we could you know we could certainly survey Deerfield because um, they have to pay uh, per item. We can survey other towns where they have to pay per item and see what see how many. Well, what's critical about that survey, if you do a survey, is to look at these other towns. How many other towns have as much state forest? In well, lands, Deerfield doesn't have anywhere close. Probably Wendell. Think Maybe Wendell, Wendell, but those Wendells, those state forests are gated as well. Irving. Conway has no gates on any of our state forests. Right by the airport. Mm -hmm. That's all wide open land. Oh, they go in there. Yeah. No, I just want to drive on the dirt roads and you can see where people just drop their bags. Yeah. I but it's, but um, they're doing that now, and it's free trash. So that's yeah, those are that people who the, don't want to pay. There's 99 percent of the people that are going to do what's correct. Is that one percent that's going to go off? Yeah, I'm not saying. And, it's and I don't think. Problem. And those are the people you're not going to change their mind. But no matter what you do, they're going to dump it wherever they feel like it's proper, right. and it's going to happen. And it's it's coming to that nominal, that that gray or where, where we fall. Is ten dollars for a cow going to be too much to make them bring it up there? They're going to dump it in the woods. You know, I mean, it's finding that. Anyway. I'd like to just piggyback real quick on what um, Jan said because I was actually in charge of a town that went from completely free trash, we had our own mm -hmm. landfill, to going to a bag program, which is not even what we're talking about here. And that was a huge concern that was brought up by everybody. Oh, we're going to have all this illegal dumping. It, di it didn't happen. And I worked for the DPW, so I would have, you know, because I was in charge of making sure that was not happening and we didn't get any more. So, I, I understand why it's a concern, um, and again, I can't say it won't happen, but that has not been our experience, and I also have um, some uh, spreadsheets from DEP where they have asked towns after they've gone to some kind of pay-as-you-throw or modified pay-as-you-throw if they've had illegal dumping, and by and large, it's no. We haven't seen any increase, so. But, yeah, I don't think the bag issue, I don't think the bags is an issue. I mean, it's the bulky stuff the bulky. that's going to be the dumping issue. Mm -hmm. um, I don't this, think anybody's going to mind paying for the bags. But I think they're going to mind if they have to pay $50 to take a couch and chair up there. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's going to be that much. This gentleman is patiently had his hands raised. Um, I, uh, unfortunately, I have a lot of feelings about this. Um, I, I really see this as a very inelegant way of solving a problem. Um, as a wet way? Inelegant. Inelegant. You, you stated that, you know, with the dumping problem, it's just a few people, a few bad apples. But, like, really what's happening here is you're going to upend the entire transfer station because of a few bad apples. My, my biggest problem with this, I, I am doing what I can to generate very little trash. My trash can is a five-gallon bucket and it takes me three weeks to fill it up. Now what you're asking me to do is, number one, save all that trash for however long it takes me to fill up a plastic bag. You're asking me to put it in a plastic bag. I spend a lot of my time trying to avoid plastic because plastic is like the thing that is destroying our planet. And the solution here has us putting everything in a trash in a plastic bag. That's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. There, there's actually not a requirement for, I mean, I've, I've talked to, the, to, to these folks about this um, in, other, in other programs I've worked with because I don't use plastic bags either, um, but I use my bird seed bags um, or feed bags. So there are alternatives for, it doesn't have to be a black plastic trash yeah. bag. The idea is, the idea is to try to, um, is to try to uh, level the playing field so people are bringing People have um, mm -hmm. basically a sticker is worth 25 pounds of trash or a 33, 33 gallon bag worth of trash. So you can put it on less. I mean, I, I have a bird, you know, I, I feed the birds a lot, so I have a lot of bird seed bags. Um, I just want to so remind you also that it was an example. And I, yeah. I said even before, I said about no loose waste and contractor bags that there would be pushback. We're doing this so you offer the comment that you're offering right and this isn't about bad apples it's about we're spending a lot of money on a consumable thing it it, it has nothing to it has nothing to do with safety like the highway department and your and safety of your roads it has nothing to do with investment like with the schools and children it's trash 
and we're we're spending a ton of money on trash that it's 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 clear that it's more than average user trash. But your entire but, but, argument is that other people are taking advantage of the system. That's why you're going to up, up, upheaval this whole thing. A, a normal resident will see no change. What we need to do is we need to solve the problem of the people that are dumping their trash in Conway. We need to punish the people that are taking advantage of the system, not the people of Conway that are doing it correctly. This will help solve that. By, by punishing the people yeah. of Conway. By making them put all their trash in a plastic bag, Again, by making just, them buy... I just said... I just said. Not true. Okay. Can I, okay. Can I, can if I need to me? measure my trash into 33 gallons, how do you propose I do that without a plastic how bag? How do you take your trash to the transfer station today? In a five-gallon bucket. You you're going to have you these guys... Said, you also said you do that every guys, three weeks, so that's yeah. one you're sticker have, every month. So right. I mean, it would be but one I mean, you're going to have these guys, like, I'm going to have to hold my bucket up and be like, hey... You know, like, I... So how often do you do that? I take my trash can every week because I put stuff in there like gross chicken, right? So, so you're saying... So I'm bringing this much trash every week because it right. stinks. I do not want to keep it around my house. Right. Right? So again, if you get 104 stickers... Yeah. And, and I just want to say, I know you need to speak. No I just want to flat. say that stinky chicken can go in the compost. Yeah, I was no, say that too. no, 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 no. The plastic that the stinky chicken came oh, in cannot go in. You said stinky chicken. The, not yeah, this okay. stuff with the stinky yeah. chicken yeah. on it. All right. So uh, first, I just want to say thank you guys for putting this together. This was very well, well presented, and uh, yeah, I feel like it only makes sense. I mean, we gotta. We have to, here's the budget. Here are the numbers, and you know, it's not a ton of money. I, it only makes sense. So, well done. Thanks. I, I, I'm choosing to listen to the experts too. You guys have done this for a really long time. I hear you when you're saying it hasn't been a problem. So, yeah. I think you're I mean, I think you have a problem. We don't control the expense end of this. It costs us what it costs us to have it transported out of the transfer station, and we're never going to have any ability to change that. Because that's a for-profit enterprise. I don't think either you can drive behavior much, either in terms of illegal dumping, or if you give me stickers versus a higher permit fee, I still have the same amount of trash. I mean, we all try to limit the amount of trash we have, but let's face it, nobody's hoarding it in their attic because <laughs> it costs money. So the problem really is illegal dumping, which is probably an intractable problem. You don't have the resources. I suppose you could do it, but it would have cost us more to check everybody that came in. So I think the problem really is, since we have to raise money to move this stuff out of here, what's the least onerous for the residents, the least onerous method? Uh, I'm not in favor of a paper throw system because I think, you know, frankly, it's a pain in the neck. I would rather see an increase in the access permit fee because, again, it's you pay it once a year. I mean, when I first moved here, I thought the dollar a sticker, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I thought the mafia should know about this place. They can dump <laughs> bodies here. For that. Uh, at 10 bucks a throw, this is still the best bargain in the Western Hemisphere. If you jack that by an order of magnitude to $100 a year, it would still be a bargain. Yeah. There's more to it, though. But yeah. Like the, we have a, part of this is a choice of as a community, what do we, what are what are we really subsidizing? Because right now, when the sticker, when the annual sticker is just ten dollars, what we are subsidizing is the highest waste generators among us. Mm -hmm. um, and the, those that are subsidizing that are the least among us that are able to afford to do so. The, the you know the the senior the senior you know whatever the, the low income the, the seniors the people that live by themselves that generate very little waste the, um, and and that if 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 you just raise the if you raise the annual permit more you're asking all those people to gener to, to subsidize right. the so, same group even more so provide waivers provide exemptions provide a sliding scale for either income 
and or age, the way we do with a lot of things. Because I think really, trash is trash. I mean, how much I produce, in other words, the taxes I pay are based on the house I live in. So, you know, someone with a big house that has limited income may still be paying a disproportionate share of their income to subsidize the town's expenses. This is one where you're suggesting as a pay-for-throw method, you'll, the people that have little will pay less. Okay, but the problem is, how does that really change things? Because ultimately, you still are going to have the same amount of trash to take out of town, to haul to South Carolina. Not, not necessarily, because, okay, the data has shown this does work in other towns, and you also have to understand that because it is the way we're set up now, I personally don't believe that people are separating the recyclables from their main trash. And if you ask the transfer station employees, so then we'll tell you the same I'd thing. I'd say about 90% of the people separate, but there are people that are just set their ways. Everything goes in in the bag. We've yeah. seen the empty barrels go in. There's cups and cans and plastic right. that should be in the recycling, which would probably save us 10, 15 ton a year right there. And having been through this kind of program before, I can tell you that just, because don't forget the, the proposal, which isn't, you know, nothing set, is to give free stickers. So the whole point is to think about what you're getting rid of each week and also to keep it from being somebody else from out of town. So these stickers will go to the permit holders, right? So that's how you keep out of town trash from coming in. And that's a big part of what we're trying to reduce. So we're not putting a burden on the residents because they're, they're getting them for free. We have more permit holders than households though? Yeah, because two cars, two, three cars, all have permits. People, okay. yeah, that's that's what that yeah, is. Yeah, I, I have two myself, just okay. to, so, one for each car. Yeah, I mean, I guess it comes down to the convenience of it, you know. Yeah. But I don't think it's necessarily, look, people that don't recycle, don't recycle. They don't give much of a care about that. I'm not sure a paper throw is going to drive that behavior. I think it's hard to drive behavior without a significant tax burden or a significant economic burden. So if you want to deter people from throwing trash away, well, you have to arrest them. I mean, that's how serious it is. If you want to make people recycle that won't, because I think most people are educated about that, they do recycle, I'm not sure I think this gets you there. But I, I, I think if you want to keep people from out of town, from throwing their trash away in Conway. Like, if my mom lives in Greenfield, and she's like, I'm just gonna bring my garbage to you. I'm gonna say, well, it's not free for me, you know? Like, I'm gonna run out of stickers eventually. You know, I mean, yeah, I think so that's where- Yeah, so it's a policing where, problem. Well, yeah. so, but, but it's, but it's, that, but it, then it becomes a point of self-policing, where it's like, you know, I'm not gonna invite people from out of town to throw trash away using my stickers, because I know I have a limited amount. Okay, well, do we have any data on how many people are illegally bringing? Well, I, I think we can look at the like our tonnage compared to Deerfield, right. which is in terms of who's doing it. It's not everybody. There's no way we could know. Yeah. So right. all, all we know is that we are we have like our our tonnage rates are, are yeah. disproportionate mm -hmm. to the size of our community and the number of trash permits. Yeah, we have. still don't know if it's a little And you you had the numbers on it, right? Didn't you say it was like nine percent? <laughs> but we wouldn't know we, that. We can't. We're assuming, assuming we, we're assuming right, people we're, are illegally right. dumping. We're because Deerfield has two and a half times our population. So the and fact the fact that we are almost the same, we, the fact but that they have trash pickup down there as well. Right. So trash it's pickup it's isn't going into their landfill. If right. it is, it's not being recorded like this. It's These it's numbers it's make it's absolutely it's no sense. No, no, no. The number. Well, let me, let me, hold, hold up. The numbers that you saw were permits. So they have 1,285 people <laughs> using their transfer station. So, so I get all of the trash bills. So um, the trash generated in in Deerfield is from those 1,285 permits. The trash generated in Conway is from your 1,030 permits. So we're doing it by permit. It's not even by necessarily by household or by user. So those are apples to apples. All of the numbers you saw, Leverett, Orange, Conway, and Deerfield, those are all apples to apples because we know how many permits are being used. It's not based on general population. Um, I just want to answer this gentleman's question uh, or, or some of his uh, response to some of your comments. I actually have seen people recycle who would never recycle because they only have two stickers a week. 
And that's what we've seen in Irving, is their, their recycling did go up by about one and a half tons a week. That's a lot. Um, because people suddenly realize, uh-oh, I'm going to run out of stickers. In Conway, I mean, in, in Irving, you can get uh, 154 stickers or something. So it's, not, it's more a psychological thing. I mean, that's three bags of, of trash a week. Um, so I have seen people increase their recycling. So, and the people who want to throw out the recycling now, if they run out of trash stickers, they have to pay for it. So, so there is online. some behavior modification. But I, I just want to be clear. This is not penalizing the people who don't make a lot of trash or the people who are going to the transfer station faithfully um, and recycling. It's really because you folks are the only town, besides Williamsburg, the only town in the county that does not have some system where there's a limit on what people can bring in for free, right? Or without some, some um, system to, mo to, to modulate the amount of trash. So I, I can say with confidence that some portion, 25, 35% is coming from out of town. And it's not, it, it's, you know, because people are being kind or somebody's mother doesn't want to pay 250 in another town. So, so it's really accountability. I think your select board is, is doing their best to um, create a system where people are accountable and it's, le it's level. Everybody gets the same amount of free trash disposal. So you don't have somebody coming in with 50. I've, I've been there. I've seen trucks come in with 15 bags of trash. Yeah. Right now, maybe they've saved it up for a month and a half, but a trailer. maybe it's not our trailer. Our so, trailer. So we're so we're keeping everybody on the same oh, level yeah. playing field. That's the system. Yeah, you you, know, you may not. They may not go that route. I'm just giving you the information that this is the this is the concept behind this program. Okay. So I know you had your raised hand raised and Jeff so, out here. So. I, I don't know. Okay. He's been holding his hand up for a while. Yes. I just couldn't see him. That's Joe. Joe? I just yeah. want to know how are we going to implement this process? How are we going to implement it? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have to carry whatever, firearms. Whatever you guys choose. <laughs> cool. Whatever you choose. Oh, at the transfer station? Where? In, in town hall up there? Or are you guys going to have to debate it more? We're going to have to add another position to control this stuff? Yeah. yeah. Are you talking about yeah. the logistics of implementing? Yeah, like we're voting or yeah, remember like this this isn't something we're creative. Yeah. I know. We're right? we, yeah, we're we're basing this on That's other towns concern. that have done this and have done it well yeah. and it's worked. So there's different ways we could implement it. I could talk for five hours about trash and what I've seen in my years working for the state highway and there is abuse going on where we are right now. Yeah. Yep. So I know at home and probably many of you here shred your documents and you make all this neat little stuff. And before we used to be able to put it in the paper, but now I understand it clogs a... Can't go in, yes. Right, yeah, it clogs something or another. But it still is a viable, recyclable piece. Compost. With, compost. With your, pardon me? Compost. 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 But how much compost yeah. can you really use, you know? You know, Erica, what the size of my lot is. You know, I, it, it would be another mountain. So what ideas do you have to treat that as something as recyclable? Where can that go? Maybe that it, question could be to you. I, no, I think what they're saying, it can go to the compost at the transfer station. The transfer station has containers for compost. And you have enough room for everybody to bring the oh, yeah. recycled recycle paper? At yeah, because the, the, yeah. the paper, well, I mean, I don't, they, they would know better, but typically once the paper's in and people are adding their wet vegetable no, and their salad, I mean, it, just, it just kind of... If they follow the, the rules, right? Mm -hmm. They're supposed to rip up pizza boxes and make them small, and if they don't, they just throw them in. And, boxes they take up a lot of space with a lot of junk that could be broken down and made more space but right, but she's she's talking just about spreading yeah, paper yeah but yeah. when you have tons of pizza boxes in there you, you don't have space for shredded paper and not well, in the pizza compost. boxes can be recycled and they can go in the compost they can go in the compost but they can go in the paper recycling okay well you may want to put them in the paper recycling yeah. It's better to go on the can, paper. We have somebody on the screen who's had their hand up for a while. Can we take whoever, whoever's there that's info. There we go. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I had put the question in the chat, but I wasn't sure. 
Is there a thought to um, phasing in some of the suggestions? Like, it, it, I, I didn't quite grasp it, but it seemed like the business dumping was and bulky waste seemed to be a huge part of the problem. So would there be a way to consider phasing out business dumping first to see what impact that had? This, this meeting was really to get feedback from the community, um, not about the implementation of any new process we might come up with. Um, so <laughs> but again, that does impact the community. I mean, if you've identified a huge issue and you're lumping that in with household garbage, <laughs> it seems to me like that's a pretty obvious problem. It is. I do believe it is. That's why we added it to the presentation. It's definitely something I think that, that the townspeople should consider. Yeah, but that's my question. How are you not separating out household dumping from these business, uh, like the contractor trash, and why aren't you considering these as separate issues? Because it seems like the contractor trash, which is what you actually had showed an image of in your presentation, is a huge problem. It, it is. My personal belief is that we shouldn't take any I think one of this is this is Jan from the Solid Waste District. I think um, one of the you know the select board is taking feedback and then they they have to kind of figure out the, the puzzle pieces here. Um, but one option, uh, one of the options is to say no business trash. Um, one is, or or cons bulky waste businesses can't use a transfer station. One option is to say you can use it but you have to pay a higher fee. Um, and then uh, on the other side, for the bulky waste, they, they could say, the town could say, no construction debris, which, you know, most often, some people do their do-it-yourself, do do uh, you know, on their own, will fix their kitchen or bathroom or something, but most people are hiring contractors, so they could just say no construction debris. So there's, there's many, I think Chris did a good job of kind of identifying the different components of the transfer station. You have household trash, you have uh, residential household trash, you have business trash, you have business bulky waste, um, and you have construction waste. And so those are kind of the components that make up uh, a little bit of your excess um, compared to other communities. And th those would be, I think, things to look at individually, how do they want to, uh, how does the town want to address each piece uh, of that so, so before we jump off the cliff and change this to throw as you pay, why can't we be a little more restrictive at the, at the transfer station to say no construction material? Start there with something. Well, and again, this is just the first I of a couple of uh, And I'm, so I'm adding a suggestion yeah. that Thank we you. start there before we go pay as you throw because I so think again, it's great for this town because it's a pain in the ass for paying you pay as you throw. I feel like I'm the worst case example here, but I am one of those do-it-yourself people, and occasionally I will redo a room and I will have a handful of sheets of drywall to bring. So if we say no construction debris, what do I do? Well, she rocks not supposed to go in there anyway. In the big construction the dumper? Mm -hmm. I've, I've been putting it in there for a decade. I know, but it's not as well. So, okay, so I have some right Greenfield. now at home. So I, won't, so I have to drive to Greenfield and pay yep. now. Yep. Because why exactly? It's not supposed to be in there, as he said in the first yeah. place. So I've lived here since 2008. I have put many sheets of plyo or, or drywall in that dumpster. And you're telling me for the last decade, the people that worked at the transfer station, like, we're doing it wrong? No, so confused. the problem is that sometimes information kind of trickles down slowly and things change slowly. It's been illegal to be in landfills for gypsum. Yeah. It's been a waistband for decades. It is a waistband. Yeah. I, have, I have to actually disagree a little bit. So the state has regulations about what can not go into trash and gypsum or wallboard is one of them. So they're right. It's not supposed to go in the trash, but DEP also gives small towns an exemption, mm -hmm. so you can put it in that bulky waste dumpster. Um, I think, you know, so there's, so there's, if you look at the signs, they all say no gypsum can go in the trash, so they're absolutely right, um, except what 
what I haven't done a good job explaining to, to them is that it can legally go in there. So you're not violating the law. I think the question is if the town doesn't want to have construction debris, then they wouldn't have that anyway. Well, look um, at this picture. We, that's all construction history. debris. Yeah. That's right. countertops. But it's a mattress. Yeah. It's all wood products, right. which adds up to a lot of weight. Okay, that stuff shouldn't be brought to the dump. We're talking trash. That's what is a citizen and taxpayer. I should be responsible for my trash, right. not that construction equipment going up in there, or not equipment going in there. It, I also like to know what is the increase next year because the numbers here just didn't jive with me. What's the increase next year, and what will be the increase on our taxes if we don't do anything? Like I have an issue with the fact that your trash looks different than mine, and you're saying my trash is not welcome here. But you know, that's, that's, that's fundamentally a way. Wait a minute. I'm not saying that. You say you are. You're saying my my trash looks like construction Z. trash. So it's yeah. not going to be wrong. You say, you know, we say that she rocks not allowed, but we've allowed you to throw your she rock in yet. I know, but apparently it's been well, we we like, saw I've just did amounts of that people do throw. If somebody comes up with a half a sheet or a yeah. sheet, yeah. we're not gonna say no, you can't. Well, okay. if somebody shows up and they got fifty well. sheets. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I like, this I mean, is where you know we say truck. Yeah, we don't have a problem with Okay, you. so I, I was under, sorry, I misunderstood. I thought you were saying that it was not allowed to be put in there. No, I mean, we got, we have to use common sense. Okay. Because okay. No, but at the same time, if he's see. a contractor and he's going to Deerfield <clears throat> and remodeling a house, yeah. he shouldn't be taking the sheetrock out of there yeah. and the equipment and throwing it in our trash. 100%. That, that's what we're trying to address. And those are the people here. that need yeah. to be policed, yeah. you know, like, and right, we but, do that. But, but here's the challenge. Those people who are doing a construction job have a resident permit. Mm -hmm. Everybody who enters the transfer station has a resident permit. Mm -hmm. So how do you expect the transfer station tenants to say, gosh, that looks like a job from Deerfield and not Conway, not, a I, Conway counter, right? So, yeah. so, well, hold on, hold on. You, so, so everybody's coming in legally. There's no illegal anything happening in, at the Conway transfer station. Or, or people the question that is clean how houses too, and they bring in furniture from other places. It's, it's, it's right. That's out so, of so, too. so, so, the, so it, again, it just comes back to accountability. You have to. There's kind of setting parameters, and so maybe it's no construction debris at all. Nothing. No construction debris at all. Maybe it's no business waste, and these folks know who's coming into business. Th these are the challenges. Is you know things have kind of gotten a little bit out of control, and I think the the board of selectmen is looking at the budget, looking at surrounding towns, and saying, how can we how can we be responsible for our own community's waste? Um, and that's I think really important. I usually tell people like that it's disposable again. Stick it in the front of the bulky box, and people do sit through it. And a lot of it just disappears, too. I think if we looked into what it would cost for these haulers that just do business for people, mm -hmm. that take or keep trash away, find out what that costs, say, hey, we got a deal for you. We'll put the box in the gun we dunk. We'll put a fee on it, so much per ton or whatever, and you're going to say, well, who's going to weigh the loads? We go to the state police and get a portable pair of scales. You drive on, drive off. You dump your stuff, he tries, he weighs your truck again, just go to yours. I mean, maybe somebody would be interested in that. You mean you want us to do As a business. Mm -hmm. it's an outside Let them put their oh, box so there. Yeah, yeah, you put the stuff in there. Oh, 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 I see. I see. And, and away it goes. So it wouldn't cost us anything because they'll haul it away and they'll make the money. And, but we get rid of it. I love that, but I don't think we have room up there for another. No, I mean the one that's there right now. Payroll. Put a box that big if you think you need it. But there'll be a fee for using that damn thing. And like he said, it comes in with a trail load or a big one of the big dump vans full of stuff. You wait, he pays the fee, and away he goes. I don't know if we've had a Jerome up there for something like that. Oh, you're saying we're in now. But if he oh, has to go But you still need to scale, I think. Yeah. The guy who's in the bin's going to unload it. Yeah. Right. But you'll know what the way is. Could you just wave his truck, then wait again when he leaves? The problem that is, is how can, track, can, uh, half the track, then wait again when he leaves. Half the time, we don't see what people throw in there. Right. 
Yeah. Well, we won't care because we ain't dealing with it. <laughs> yeah, but you got, you got the guy that's going to put the in box in there is going to deal with it. And, I mean, the, Mike, the Mike, so just, you know, you, you, the reason that the select board has sort of is doing this is because the caught select board took over management of the transfer station mm -hmm. last year. Um, so all of a sudden, the costs are much more visible. Uh, and we're and delineated that way in the budget and everything else and we're aware that the costs have really gone and, and we're not even in charge we're not even in charge of the things that we thought we were in charge of like what our contractual rate when when we have a three-year contract with a waste hauler and in year one they go bankrupt and they decide to liquidate everything um, that 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 uh, dependability or that future planning for three years that we thought we were locked into gone um, and, and to, you know so so it's and when we take a look at the numbers the one thing that really seems to jump out is the per ton per, absolutely per the numbers don't make sense for the and, people and, that live in this town so that should be a red flag that's where we need to look so either somebody's bringing in a lot more trash into this town that shouldn't be coming here which is where we got to look at it's not the normal residence that's overwhelming that coming up to the tonnage you have there. Can't be. I've seen a guy emptying out his barn because he's selling his house, and he's been there four or five times on the day yep. Yep. with windows and doors and yep. bikes. And this is stuff he's had in his barn for 30 years. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, it is some of the residents. Well, some of it yeah. is, absolutely. There's no doubt about it. It's going to happen. But not to the tonnage that, if you compare it to Deerfield, it just doesn't make sense. And, and when and when you look at it as like sort of a menu of a whole different kinds of options, there's a whole lot of different things that you can do to change it policy wise. Well, that's custom, what I'd like to propose. Is let's try some of those options and before we start paying yeah. for bags. Yeah. I think you that's a pain in the ass. But we're not talking about paying for bags. bags. That's where I'm I I I understand that. But once you use up those 52 bags or stickers, stickers or whatever, what are you going to do? But it was 104. Two I don't care how many it was. Does so, it matter because she's saying her mother's bringing trash from Green? I'm using an example. She's bringing <laughs> trash from Greenfield. She's going to give her a sticker and it's going to go in there. So if she's going to use up her stickers. Once the stickers are used up, what are you going to do? You're going to charge them for more stickers. You got to buy them. So exactly. So that's what I'm saying. Is this? It, it's a money issue. It's they're they're still going to pay. It's it's not like we're giving it for free. Yeah, I don't, our tax dollars I don't, are paying for it one way or the other. I don't really follow because if you put a price on over, like if, if we were to give out two, um, two stickers per week, 104, so you'd have the equivalent of two 35 gallon trash bags per week. If that's not enough, then, well, first we will know then by the number of stickers that are given out, how much tonnage to expect. We'd have a better, we'd be better able to plan our budget in a way because we know how much tonnage we're going to expect. And then if people have to buy more bags, we could make it so that that covers some of the cost of, you know, the additional trash. That's my point, is you're going to the pay to throw. But that's, but it's modified because you get... It is modified, and, but it's going to get there. And I think the average trash thrown away per week is one and a half bags, I believe. So two is actually generous. But you know where that's going. Okay, you're going to start out with so many free bags, three stickers, and we're going to go to pay to throw. It's ultimate we. If you don't think that's what's going to happen, you're crazy. You know that's where it's going to go because well, yeah. every town around us is doing that exact same thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not my decision because I don't I don't live in town. And I'm not on a select board. But um, in most like like Irving and Rowe are never going to go to full pay as you throw because they have communities that would not really accept that. So you know, I think the select board could have the choice of saying you have to pay for every bag but i don't think that's the that's not on the table and i can't imagine it would be really hard for a town to take away any free bags i think so i've never seen anybody do that but this gentleman had his hand up and then this might be way out that we were talking about how can we cut down on that trash coming from other towns everybody's sitting here tonight if you're from calm we just got an excise tag so we know what the number plate is of everybody sitting in this room. You put a camera at the end of the entrance. Oh boy. Not what these guys are for, they only have to be about. 
just like on 90, you go down to 90 and your transport is picked up. They know where Doug Baker went when he left when he came back. <laughs> and it takes a picture of every plate comes in that door and it's pretty easy to trace that plate to where the hell the car came from. I, I can tell you, having had that system that I was in charge of, the number of hours you have to spend looking at those photographs and matching it up is almost not worth it, to be honest with you. And it costs a lot for the software to do that. Well, you don't have no problem sending me to bill. But, but see, the issue... But see, the issue... Right, home, it's in the mail. Right, but the issue is not that the license plate coming in is illegal. It's that somebody said to somebody else, oh, go ahead, give me your stuff. I'll just take it up because well, it's I'm free for us. But it's not. <laughs> so, so I have a question for the guys that work up there. Or, or so, you come in, oh, my car is in the shop, and it's in there for a few weeks. Yeah, can I get my one on a cars. sticker, or can and I buy a sticker? So, and just, how do you know they're from the town half the time? The, the numbers don't jive for the amount of households we have in this town, the amount right. of people okay. there is in this town. I don't care if you buy five stickers. You still only have really one out household okay so the numbers just don't make sense so you guys are up there at the dump and you see what's coming in where do you think this extra trash is coming from and this extra building materials i mean that's obviously a contractor of some sort it's all coming from that. erica's mother what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> so so where do you think it's coming from most of it came from conway that's the but problem. they come up with it they come up from the town and they smoosh that stuff down so all the wood gets broken up and we break it up ourselves yeah. so that we have more room in the dumpster so what looks like broken wood there, a lot of that's furniture. Yeah, that we smashed. And <laughs> almost all of it is Conway residents. Yeah. But we don't know where the Conway residents are bringing it from. I mean, because the they got, right, they got right. the sticker on I've lived here as long as you, Mike. I know everybody that comes in there. If I don't know their name, I know them by sight. I know if they live here or not. Yeah. But I don't have really any authority to say, where did you get that from? Right. You know, no, I didn't come from your house. And we have to base <laughs> our decisions on the majority, not on select few. Do we have a guy named Eddie in town? <laughs> He does odd jobs. So he, I actually wanted to he bring this up. He does a lot up. of clearing okay. out basements and clearing out barns. And he brings a lot of waste that is residents. He's a contract. He's doing it, you know, for the town's people, but he's a resident. So do you tell him, no, I'm not going to allow you to, to take that person's shed that fell during a storm? So, many small right. so I, as I see it, the lowest hanging fruit here is businesses. Is what? Why is a business, business? Why is a business allowed to pay ten dollars at the Conway dump and dump as much trash Good as question. they want? That's why we're doing this. Yeah. That's like, one of the reasons. Well, how? Well, that's the I'll, lowest. I'll speak fruit. for myself because I have a business in town, and yes, I do bring my trash up there, and it's probably forty-five bags a week. So, if I have to pay more or get a different butt dump sticker, I think that's fair, but I'm only generating. For trash stuff from the guys at break not it's not all my recyclables go to Kramer's it's nothing like you know it's not trash it's not like I'm bringing other stuff up there it's in bags yep. so I don't want to limp uh, lump businesses into all that now Russ I don't know if you guys bring any up there you probably have your own dumpster I don't no, know we, we bring some up there and I I was going to bring this up we're also as a business we're also a taxpayer right so we should get something for our taxes we're not sending any kids to school we're using a dump we supply part of the fire department when they need us so there's got to be some give and take i think and the other thing that i that i want to bring up that if it does come to where i put in a dumpster um, that would probably end the recycling that we do at the business at the present time. We try to sort all our cardboard, the guys can vouch for that, we bring our cardboard, we tend to, we tend to sort everything the best we can. We dump metal in the metal bin and so forth. But if I were to pay for a dumpster, man, it would all go right in there. I That's would, a horrible threat. <laughs> no, no, it's not. That's a horrible threat. 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 It is not. You don't have to pay anything to bring recycling to our dump. Don't that's a what? terrible threat. <laughs> I, I, I think he just means that's that's human behavior, 
right? I mean, that if a dumpster's there, I, so I will well, say, if the dumpster's there, they're going to throw and, it. And, and we're it's paying for it. And it's on Route 116. Does anybody here not think that oh, someone's going to have a locket? Yeah, you have to have a locking dumpster. Yeah, but the other thing, but just because so right it goes, in, just because it goes into a dumpster doesn't mean it gets doesn't get we recycled. We have thought about it. We have thought really? about it. Yeah, as really. Convenience okay. to us. I mean, but we think about <laughs> also people coming in and leaving it outside of it. So if we put it in the dumpster, you better. Most dumpsters are locked now because people don't want to pay for the bags in these other towns and they throw it in that dumpster. I found I found that after the running a business in Whiteley, that if a business in town has a dumpster outside, they're going to get everybody's trash. But that's why you have to lock it. I mean, no, they leave it outside. They just leave it on the ground outside. They leave it on the ground outside. Yeah. So what do you do? You put it in. Yeah. You can put a fence up so they don't know it's there. No, I understand Russ's part. I mean, he's saying that, you know, right now he takes the extra time to separate all of his ways. So when he does go to the, right. the dump, he puts it in the right places. Yeah. If so he's, he's got his own dumpster, yeah, but if he's got his own dumpster and he's being forced to use it, why should he pay the extra manpower to throw everything in his dumpster? Exactly. Just to know, Bakers does have their own dumpster and they use that. Every business I know has their own dumpster. The, the, idea that, like, has its own the, other, the idea that a that. business in Conway that generates yes, tons of trash doesn't have their own dumpster is like, the the talk about subsidizing yeah. someone in town, like, holy smokes. Yeah, but I'll bet Baker's, sorry, like, Baker's throws everything in that. Yeah. Like, like Russ said, though, that business is paying taxes. What does is, what is that business get out of this town with its tax money it pays? The only thing it gets is that dump. The only thing. Okay. Huh? So we're we're the, uh, State uh, road. We're, yeah, we're, back. we're also beyond the limit of uh, the, the meeting we had planned. Uh, what else do they get? Here. So on our no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the dumpster. I will never have a dumpster. <laughs> real, real quick, on our town website. There's oh, on the town website, there is a place where you can do resident feedback. So if anybody has any comments, questions, anything, please send it to me, and then you know I can collate it and give it to the select board. Our email addresses are also on the website. Yeah. So I just thanks again. A lot of hard work you guys did. Thank you. Nice job on this. It's coming back. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Swap shop. Oh, the ladder thing. Is the PowerPoint uh, put up I can email it to you. Sure. Cake for cats. We can put it on the website. We can put it on the website. Oh, yeah. You just put it on the website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, we haven't closed the meeting. I just wanted to say, uh, also, um, you know, thank you for everybody being here. But the one thing we didn't get to touch is how we even want to make this decision. Do you want this, the select board to make this decision? No. Do we no. want town meeting to make this decision? Um, if it goes to town meeting, it's going to pass. So whatever you guys present, everything well, at town meeting passes. We have four buttons on our on our clickers no. now. <laughs> but I'm hoping to change that. Hey. <laughs> No, what you want to say? Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a good evening. Second. 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 Second.